like for someone to even admit that is is a huge step i don't even care if it's directed at me like i love hearing that Mm -hmm. you changed my mind everybody thinks their way is right and i would argue no way is right you want the truth you can't handle the truth (laughs) you might have to be on some kind of psychedelic to understand this episode (laughs) and i might actually be uh (laughs) what's working right for one person isn't working right for his neighbor and you know like how do you define what's right all the things that we think are a big deal all the conflicts all the shit that we fight over like they don't mean anything like chances are this this whole solar system is going to be gone at some point and the human race will be forgotten whatever you are whatever you had whatever we've created our whole existence will be gone and forgotten Okay, welcome to another Kitchen Sink Microscopy. I am Eric Rosenblatt, and we would love it if you would like and share this video and, uh, you know, subscribe to the channel. And if you want notifications for all of the cool stuff that we occasionally post, uh, hit that little bell down there. Yeah. Arr, I'm Casey Roshbert. <laughs> and if you would like to hang out to the end of the song, you'll hear a new song, matey. Uh, <laughs> all right, that's enough of the pirate crap. Um, <laughs> if you'd like to get that song, you could go on to uh, patreon.com slash ksmvidcast and throw us a few bucks and you get all of the songs. You can listen to it on Spotify or iTunes. And, uh, you know, why don't you uh, crack open a beer with us, or in my case, a cider tonight? And uh, if you'd like to advertise on Kitchen Sink Microscopy, your beer right here. <laughs> oh hell yeah! That's where we'll great. do it. Yeah, <laughs> we'll we'll both drink it together. Yeah. <laughs> well, anyway, what what shall we talk about tonight, matey? Our Arr, well, I'd like to talk about pirates, but unfortunately, that's not going to happen. Not this uh, time. Swass. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I, sweetons. <laughs> sweetons, exactly. Uh, you know, well, I had a lot of ideas, um, and, and there's all these ideas running around my head about things we could talk about. Um, so I kind of just, you know, just dredged the dregs of all of my thoughts of things that I've been thinking about and um, way to hype uh, the episode. Yeah. <laughs> it's not Spread actually off be... the, the, the bottom shelf. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, it's just something that's been kind of sitting around for a while is swilling around in, in my mind. Um, speaking of swill. Yeah. That's going to be the best topic. <laughs> it's the ones you don't expect. Right. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> well, and I, I think there, there's there's a lot to to discuss here, um, but you know, so the thing is, in 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 Biden's inauguration speech, he called for national unity, right? But you know, rather than give me hope, it kind of made me wonder. You know, is something like that even possible? Has the U.S. become so? ideologically divided as to be irreconcilable. Uh, and, and unity, like, is that even a good thing? Like, do you want to be that good, homogenous? That's a good question. Yeah. I mean, isn't, isn't like the difference b- between 
philosophies and things and people having discussions and arguments about things. Isn't that what bring, you know, brings new ideas to yeah. life? Well, here's the thing. Like if everybody's the same, if everybody's happy exactly the way things are, you've already got a huge chink in your mail, right? Because all it takes is one person to kind of challenge the system and they can exert so much power, you know? Yeah. Oh yeah, exactly. Well, like you don't have to sway several different types of thinking. You just have one. (laughs) That's a, that's a really good point. And, and a point that's probably not really considered when people think about that. Like, Oh man. I mean, I, I would like to think that the more you're infighting with, you know, your own countrymen, let's say, uh, the mm-hmm. less you'll be like fighting others. But that's not really the case with us. We're always going to war. Well, I, I don't uh, think it's the case with anybody, actually. Um, yeah, that's true. But yeah, I mean, you know, you've got to have that conflict, right? I think. If- well, yeah, and it depends. It it, like it should be like a healthy, constructive conflict. It it depends yeah. on what's behind your rationale for for said disagreement and conflict. Like, what's the goal? Yeah, you know, if the goal is to be correct, you, I, I want to be right. <laughs> well, I think uh, <laughs> war is inevitable at that point. Yeah, I almost think. I would rather people get jazzed up about the idea of going into something saying, I've got to be wrong. You know, like Mm -hmm. challenge yourself to think like you really hope that your mind will get changed. And uh, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. No, I I completely (laughs) agree with that. That, 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 that's a very healthy way to approach life in general, the, your own perspective and, and, perception of the world around you that um your closely most closely held beliefs you, you should challenge them and and hope that somebody could prove you wrong i guess in, yeah in a sense and i d- um, i don't mean to make it sound like hey go out and be gullible it's more no. like it's more like you know you don't have to change your mind but you you're kind of hoping that you will because there's there is kind of an exhilaration in in realizing that you've overcome a hurdle right or or learn something or whatever yeah. and and it, it, it oftentimes in my experience when when people endeavor to go out there and change everybody's mind you know have have like a proper conversation about things oftentimes both parties minds are changed in some way like everybody learns something and that's how it should be it shouldn't be like you know one person just beats the other person down like oh finally i've won you know i'm right (laughs) no it's like you learn something i learn something and and we're better for it and in fact we might find a, a minute ago we could have been mortal enemies and now we're the best of friends yeah yeah so i Unity's kind of, I don't know, like blown out of proportion as far as like how awesome it is. Because, you know, a couple of weeks ago, I, I went out to uh, see a local band and um, I actually sat down with a guy in person for the first time. You know, I like, I, I knew him from his band. You know, I would see his band open for Jeff Tate or something. And, you know, um, <clears throat> known him in that sense for like several years but we've only been talking on facebook since like about the advent of pandemic and then i finally meet him in person right and we're we're having a a discussion like we always kind of went back and forth on on facebook about things like we're we're both in the middle of things a lot but i lean one way he leans the other sort of there's still that vibe right where you kind of Squabble over things. Squabble over things. Yeah, yeah, and right. I think that's uh, that's fine. But yeah, well, yeah, but um, I'm I'm trying to advocate for why that's a good thing because you know I just sat down with this guy for the first time in person and it was just like we were old buddies, <laughs> and uh, and at one point in the night he said, you know, he just casually like said, you, you know, you've changed my mind about things, and I I was like, wait, wait, what, what, what? 
like that that was like hugely impactful for me to hear like that that's so meaningful yeah that that's a significant wow like for someone to even admit that is is a huge step i don't even care if it's directed at me like i love hearing that mm-hmm. you changed my mind i don't care if it's directed at me that those words are beautiful <laughs> well and and the fact that it is directed at you you know it, it says maybe you're doing something right you know maybe but uh you know like <clears throat> that felt like a shared experience right like yeah. they were showing their vulnerability and admitting something that we've built up to be like this good thing like being right all the time as if mm-hmm. that's even possible <laughs> you know well yeah exactly and and i think that's one of the great things about humanity is um wait i had something very poignant i had a poignant point to make <laughs> um but i kind of lost it um oh well what i was driving at with my story though is like at the end of the night we still had roughly the same kind of philosophy one one minor thing might have changed here or there but we still were on like either side of a fence however thick or permeable that fence is you know (laughs) and i wasn't thinking like oh gee i wish i could have like swayed him more towards my direction or anything it was it was more like i was enjoying that differentiation and thought you yeah, know, that discourse. And you stuff. have something to bounce pe- off of people, well, and it, sometimes minds get changed. Well, and and that was maybe that was what I was thinking about. Um, I, I should probably have a little bit more beer. I've got a few <laughs> bit more over there. Um, that's the thing. It's it, it, it like at the end of the day, like getting along with people despite our differences is kind of the most important thing. And, you know, if you disagree with somebody, you have a conversation, everybody plants their own seeds and something grows. And I would hope it would be the truth, you know, or, or something closer to the truth. Like, I, I don't think there's really such a thing as actual objective truth necessarily, especially in, in um, matters of uh, opinion. Wait, um, you, you want the truth? You can't handle the truth. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. That wasn't so much of a Jack Nicholson voice as it was a cage voice. But. Cage. Oh hell yeah. Yeah. Old school style, man. <laughs> <laughs> oh wow. <laughs> well, and, and that's something I think that is really, really important that there's this division, like an us versus them mentality. And I feel like it's not something that's a a natural outgrowth of society. I think it's something that's thrust on us, like propagandized onto us. Like, you know, Oh, it's, it's the us and the others, right. You know, Oh, we're the, we're the good guys. They're the bad guys. But it's like, you know, if you look from the outside, you're really not different from each other. I mean, yeah, you have different ideas, but they're really not even that different. And and the, the thing is, like, everybody's an idiot. Like, <laughs> this is the problem. It, everybody thinks their way is right. And I would argue no way is right. Like, I mean, is well, there even such a thing as, like like the one ring like the the unifying theory of physics that that like there's only one way like everything i don't know well it it's it's right but in what circumstances under what parameters under what perspective you know like what's working right for one person isn't working right for his neighbor and you know like how do you define what's right (laughs) <laughs> well that's a good point like your own personal experience your own personal uh structure dictates how a, a, a certain system will affect it like is something effectual or is something correct i mean it really yeah it just depends like it 
it's not something that's universally applicable, but it's kind of like education, right? You, you know, you could say, okay, well, this is the perfect way to teach people. Um, and so we're going to apply it to every single student. And then, well, the inevitable, like, wait a minute, why, how come everybody's <laughs> failing? Well, I had the perfect system. Well, okay. It worked perfectly for those three people that you taught. Right. You know, human beings are complex. And so this, this reminds me of a minute microscopy I did about uh, personal truth. You know, most people mm-hmm. think that they, they, they think it means something other than what it really means. You know, like they're, <laughs> they're thinking, uh, do, do we well, have to cut to that truth princess bride like, clip now? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they're thinking personal truth is like, I don't like this fact. I want to believe this fact. And that's my personal truth. I'm going to mm-hmm. treat something that's not a fact as a fact. And that's not what that is. No, <laughs> no, but that's how they use it. You know, um, you know, they say, I don't follow the law because it's my personal truth or whatever. It's like, nee. <laughs> well, that, I mean, uh... but, but I, well, okay. Yeah. That the point I'm trying to make could, could make an argument for the alternative to that, I suppose. Um, <laughs> yeah. I was, I was just trying to say like a personal truth is, is kind of something about yourself that, you know, so it's like, if I know I'm a visual learner, and the teacher just gives us like, you know, directions and that's it. And that's yeah, the text style. on paper, basically. Yeah. Yeah. That's not going to align, you know, that's not yeah. right for that person, you know? Yeah, exactly. Well, that, that's a good differentiation to make that, you know, between your own way of perceiving the world and interacting with it versus, um, you know, kind of applying the same logic, like parallel to everything else and expecting it to, to hold like it's not going to because oh, that isn't how things work, especially to other people or, or complex systems. It, it doesn't work like that. Um, like uh, this ooh, totally man. went from unity to like what it means to be right. Yeah, or what deep. is truth <laughs> or reality too. Right. Yeah. I mean, I, I often, you, you, there was a moment when I was a kid um, and, and this is, this is like a big turning point in my life that kind of made me really reevaluate everything. Um, well, there were a few moments. The alien abduction was one of those too, but uh, we won't. There's an episode for that. Yeah. Yeah. We'll just skip that. Um, but there was a point where I was like, I don't know. It was probably like in high school or something like that, a teenager. And I I went outside on a nice warm summer night. It was a crystal clear sky, you know, totally dark. (laughs) There was like no obstruction, very little light pollution somehow in Tacoma. Um, And I, and I was like, struck by the beauty of the stars and everything around me. And I just, I I laid down in the grass in the backyard and I just looked up and it occurred to me like, what we're, I don't mean shit. Like I am a tiny speck on this other tiny speck in the middle of an insignificant solar system in an insignificant portion of an insignificant galaxy in the middle of infinite space. And I almost had a mental breakdown at that point, but uh, <laughs> fortunately that didn't happen. Damn. And, and it really like uh, it put everything into perspective. I, uh, it, yeah. I, I mean, just thinking about it now, I, I'm just like, Oh wow. You know, all the things that we think are a big deal, all the conflicts, all the shit that we fight over, like they don't mean anything. Like chances are this, this whole solar system is going to be gone at some point and the human race will be forgotten. Whatever you are, whatever you had, whatever we've created, our whole existence will be gone and forgotten and like never to come back. 
Oh, wow. um, so, yeah, did I get a little Jeez. bit too nihilistic? <laughs> <laughs> well, if you love the stars so much, why don't you marry them? <laughs> if I could, I would. <laughs> I think I would too. <laughs> yeah. Well, but you know, the. Uh, there, there like, certain... my wife my wife is so hot she's never been <laughs> kelvin <laughs> <laughs> oh man well you know you might want to steer clear on the you know the wedding night um because <laughs> consummating that I marriage see. might be a little <laughs> bit dangerous um <laughs> <laughs> Oh, okay. Well, sorry for everybody <laughs> listening on headphones. <laughs> oh man. Oh Jesus. Uh, That's some good cider. <laughs> yeah, lager. <laughs> mm. No, that is some deep stuff though. Like I was just I heard something today about how like uh what was it like if you held out your arm from like your arm to your elbow it was like however long it took to like create the galaxy or something and then basically all of human history uh would come off on like a flake of your fingernail if you filed it (laughs) wow it just is a like a point of perspective i was like geez well, and that's really important to you, you, it kind of goes along with what I was like, saying about like how, how far the, down do you divide unity? <laughs> like, well, <really>? yeah, <laughs> like, but, but that, that was kind of going along with what I said about the, the, the scale of the universe and stuff mm-hmm. like, you know, significance, like how significant are the things that we worry about today? You know, right. 10 years from now are the things that you got all stressed out and anxious about, like, are they really going to matter? You know, think back 10 years in the past, like what, what was important and does it still matter today? Like maybe it shouldn't. I, I, I think that's really important because life is short. We should probably be doing significant things. We should be working together to solve big problems and, and, and get out there and seed the universe. Oh, wait, we have to, uh, <laughs> we have to drop it loads all over your planet. <laughs> to boldly go <laughs> <laughs> oh man I, I mean the thing is like i i see all the time like people talking about things that uh, there's all this conflict and people are getting all bent out of shape over things and it's like you know take a step out of your house or apartment look outside go to the store or something like that you know everybody's getting along for the most part Unless you're in uh, stop and go traffic in rush hour, well, then <laughs> everything's out the window. But you know, you go to a park or something, kids are playing, parents, different parents that don't even know each other are having a conversation, they're hanging out. Like everybody gets along innately. Like, uh, and I think there's, there's an important point there. That I'm probably missing because I probably had too much beer, but I'll have some more beer. <laughs> well, that's, that's probably why some people leave conflict. You know, they storm out in the middle of a fight or whatever. They're basically trying to get back to that point of comfort where people are getting along. Well, and, and that's actually a very good tactic um, because a lot of times the conflict itself becomes the drive. Yeah. Like it's no longer about the, the ideological difference or whatever you disagreed on. The conflict becomes core. And if you break yourself away from that, that portion dissolves. And now you can like regroup or think about it or, you know, sleep on it, you know, like take some time and, and, and contemplate it a bit. Yeah, and come back and and be a little bit more rational instead of like hyper focusing on the fact that you disagree. So this is interesting. Now we're kind of arguing against having that conflict, you know that that challenge. And mm-hmm. I think this is a good way to you know explain how it's kind of like 
you know, a, a sine wave or a ripple in a fence if you hit it, you know, like it, it can fluctuate on either side of that. Like the conflict can harm and, you know, like you got to understand the signs of when it's like doing actual harm and then move away from it. Yeah. But then the conflict that is like challenging you and helping you grow and stuff like that, you know, lean into that. You know. Oh no, that's a really good point. Uh, but the the problem is we're sort of conditioned um, to to like always be right. Like, oh, my team has to win, right? Yeah. That kind of becomes the the end goal. You have to win the argument. You have to be right. You have to give them the last word and stuff. And it's like you know what? I don't know that there really is a last word. I don't know that anybody actually wins conflicts uh, if there in fact if there is a conflict that suggests that there's probably a lot of nuance there's a lot to discuss and as such there's no like black and white like clear cut definition uh, delineation between uh right and wrong i guess yeah well there's no clear cut between winner and loser because if like t- take a a inspirational sports movie for instance Um, oh like the replacements one of my favorite ones that actually made me cry (laughs) (laughs) and it was about football of all things they do tend to be tear jerkers yeah but um you know like imagine you're watching a movie where you know you're you're rooting for this team or whatever uh through the whole movie and um the other team you know, they're at the final game or whatever. The other team has this kid that's like four foot ten, but they let him on the team anyway. And he just looks sad and mopey and stuff. And at the end, like one of the guys sacrifices the game to pick this kid up so he can make his first slam dunk or whatever. Mm-hmm. So your 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 team that you're rooting for the whole movie, yeah, you know, they just lost the game technically, but they did something so heartwarming. Could they really be the ones that lost that day? You know, it's that kind of like perspective can that, help. That's you think a good, about. really good point. Like, oh man, yeah. Well, like and, what, and that what we consider winning, we need we need to even challenge that in a moment. That raises the question of like, what is winning, and and what are we playing the game for? Basically, is it the highest achieving score? a goal. Is it the highest score, or is there a higher purpose to playing right. the game? You know, is there something more that we get? out of this conflict it doesn't even uh, have something in higher purpose even. yeah it doesn't even have to be a higher purpose it could just be a random occurrence like you know the the right path or whatever when you know your perspective gets shifted by randomness um that's the one that makes you feel enlightened and like you overcame something and it was really just the product of your choice not the choice of an outward being yeah. yeah oh, oh man that's this is a, such a deep episode oh man <laughs> well i just i so i i i played football well the, the european football uh soccer uh for the us yanks um and and i remember the the coach was always big on at the end of every game we would shake the opposing players hands we you know line up and we'd walk past each other shake hands, high five, whatever, like good game, you know, that kind of thing. Um, To reinforce the idea that it's just a game. Like, it doesn't matter. And and it stuck with me to this day. That's a really good lesson. It's a really good lesson in general for life, for, for disagreements of all sorts. Like, and uh, conflicts and, and conversations and arguments and things like, hey, you know what? Eh, if we, we, we don't really agree. It really doesn't matter. I mean, we tried. Maybe we learned something. Um, but good game. That- yeah. And, and it would be nice if that translated outward a little more into the teaching style. Like, because the thing is, you remember that sort of meta lesson better when you've experienced it right mm-hmm. so you know the teachers should be be very mindful to like compliment kids when they you know have a, a light bulb moment or something you know say hey i'm recognizing that you 
figured this out and that's so awesome you know and Mm. then that kind of nurtures that sort of response in them to be like you know when they see that that's the kind of feedback they need to get you know it it sets that pattern that muscle memory well exactly and you know one of the things about that whole handshaking experience is in a sports situation your it's your team versus their team right yeah. and and that's all that matters get the ball in the goal or whatever um you know the, it's it's Put the everybody hot dog else in the, the hallway yeah but everybody else wearing a different colored jersey they're the others right they're dehumanized they're just a bunch of uh you know sprites in a game or something like that uh, you, and and but to actually sit and go down the line and shake people's hands look them in the eye they're human beings they're other people like whether you won or you lost like you have to look every single person in the eye and and make contact physical contact with that person and well maybe debate should be like that too um i feel like there should be some barry white music playing right now for some reason (laughs) (laughs) make physical contact (laughs) look them in the eye (laughs) oh man (laughs) If only we had uh, enough uh, uh, viewership to be able to pay the royalties to play that song. <laughs> we play it at the end. Um, <laughs> hmm. Hmm. Well, okay. Oh, wow. that This has gotten very, very meta. Um, yeah. As wow, usual. To think all this came from a Biden speech? Yeah, I know. <laughs> Just like an offhand comment. Oh, man. Well, so I, I, I would wonder, like, because I've, I've thought about this, like, over the years. And, and you know, this, this all comes back down to that whole, are there irreconcilable issues between people? And I would say it's probably very superficial, but but people don't see it that way. You know, it's, it's sports, right? Uh, Politics becomes sports. Um, So is the U S too big or, well, I I guess is the U S too complex to really stay together in a coherent way? Like has entropy finally done its work on, on this country? I, yeah, that's a hard one. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 so I, I, I do, I do agree that um, uh, a government only has so much physical reach and yeah. influence, right? Yeah, a lot but, of it is is like individual interactions and societies that form and cultures and things yeah. like that. But, you know, at the same time, you can't necessarily draw a straight line between, you know, size of a country and stability of their government system. You know, it's... No, that's true. That's true. So so there's not really like a hard, hard data line that you can make that argument with. But it, it does still seem to be kind of a truth. And, and you know, you, you don't necessarily have to measure things and whether the government collapses or not, I suppose. That's a little too extreme, right? Well, no, but <laughs> one thought that I have is, like, why does it even have to be one indivisible nation, right? Like, a long time ago, maybe it was mostly indivisible, but maybe now it could be divided. And... Is that a bad thing? Yeah, yeah. You know, like just because there's a government, like one federal government, right? Um, does that mean that somehow we should all be behind it? We should all be together? Well, it's not like that's a living entity either. So. No, no, it's it's an artificial construct. Like it yeah. doesn't actually exist. It's something we made up. 
yeah if, something if, if, if we lost this perfectly. unified government we would not shed you know any blood in that process you know yeah. like the process of the the ideal dissolving into something else you know well yeah <laughs> yeah and I'm, I'm like you know what what is even the purpose of this uh it, aren't there bigger things I mean, eventually the sun's going to go supernova or nova and swallow us up. Shouldn't that be a big deal? What about like aliens invading us from some far flung galactic federation or something like that? I mean, that could happen. I'd rather put efforts into getting along to combat something external rather than uh, combat internal disagreements. Um, mm-hmm. You know, we, we, let, let's not nuke each other before the aliens have a chance to do it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Are we going to get into how to solve war? Yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> God. Oh. Like, I would like, like to. Well, I mean, well, I mean, if. If, if we have an organization like the UN, why aren't they having discussions like this? Like getting really deep into the philosophy of like, what's right, what's wrong? Is unity good? Is unity bad? What's bad? What's good? You know, what's right, mm. what's wrong? It, you got to understand that stuff on some level. Well, it, it, it's a matter of perspective too. Like, what are we fighting for? What, over some, a piece of dirt? Or something. World War One taught us that that's bullshit. You know, um, what I, if I don't know? What if people did what they wanted to do, but had some kind of uh, physical marker, like a tattoo or something that they bore to show this is how I've decided to live my life. So this is how I should be treated. Well, the only <laughs> issue I would have with that is that times change people change yeah like you know it, what if you got a tattoo when you were 17 um would you have to remove it when you turn i don't know 25 or something like that when you had some kind of revelation and, well, and, and learn maybe it's things? like maybe it's a a tree hey on you, right there's an app for that <laughs> <laughs> But a tree can sprout branches in different directions, right? It can change yeah. as your life goes by. So, you know, well, maybe it could I just would, be I, something like that. Well, and I, I think it would be good, uh, you know, uh, to go with like core philosophical ideals, I guess, mm-hmm. as the uh, trunk of said tree. Um so you could compare those like wh- what do you hold dear what's important to you those kinds of things and and yeah i mean people are complex so maybe you should steer clear of people that are going to bring you a lot of pain and conflict and things like that and, and gravitate towards those who support you but then again just like sports challenging yourself is valuable in and of its own right that, that, you know, there are times where you should do something dangerous um, for the betterment of your own self and, and, and maybe others. Yeah. I, uh, I don't know. Um, I don't know if I'm making any sense there. I mean, yeah, that's, that's how you build. That's how you work a muscle, right? Mm-hmm. You have to break it just a little bit. Not too well, and, much. And, you know, like that pain in your shoulder, that's your shoulder building itself better, stronger than it was before. Yeah. Like, but if you, it's if not a bad thing. It, it, it may hurt, but if you're well enough bad. trained, you can tell the difference between the pain as well. Yeah. Right. You know oh. what muscle repairing feels like versus, oh crap, I just broke a tendon or something. Or I have serious. cancer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, I was, exactly. I was going with the muscle analogy, but <laughs> yeah, no, th- th- that's a really good point. We can do that, sarcomas that, too. I guess. <laughs> being familiar with your own body, like I, I would say, being familiar with your own mind, like how you operate, how you think, 
those are very important things. And I think we're conditioned not to think, but merely to react. Mm -hmm. There's no like self-analysis and self-reflection. Humans don't, well, I don't know. I can't, I, I can only speak for the U S because that's where I've lived. Um, but you know, we're, we're, we're not taught to self-reflect and, and question how we got here and why we think the way we do. Maybe um, you can only limit yourself to Tacoma, Washington. <laughs> well, I've because, been all over because, the country. Because that's generalizing the entire country now based on what, how you've been learning. Right. And well, we do. Okay. So we do have a national education system and this is kind of like tied into that. Um, So that's kind of where I was going. Mm. That idea, not, not cultural, but governmental. Um, I I bet you'd find significant enough difference geographically between the same quote unquote, you know, um, educational system on a federal level. It, yes, because it, it is not entirely unified, like in whole. Right. Yeah. There's, there's a lot of flexing. regional differences there. Yeah. Um, and and yeah, that that's true. I'm I'm not gonna claim some like the uh, larger the spread, the better the flex better be, right? <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. You know, if it's built of something solid, sexual? it needs to be like thinner and thinner the further you go out just to maintain okay. integrity. That was totally sexual. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Well, yeah. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah, I, I definitely think. I mean, my my own personal view is that this country, the the USA, is too broad a space to have one ideological philosophy like there's no way you you could have like a tiny island that that might all feel the same but when when you have like 330 million people across like thousands of miles of breadth uh, like there, there's no way they're all gonna think the same and feel the same and, and and want the same things and so like The thought is, in this country, it's really significant that the presidential election, like, oh, my God, you know, the president is like the big top dog, big dick swinger, like, oh, yeah, okay, you know, you're now you're the man for the moment or woman or whatever. Um, But uh, I don't know. I, I I mean, I guess I feel like there's room enough for everyone in this country, in this space. So long as one faction doesn't try to control everybody. And that, because that's what breeds conflict. Um, yeah. I don't know. I, I, I'm, I'm kind of like, you know, there's probably too many thoughts something, there. Something you said in there triggered a train of thought that I got lost in. Like, what if Joe Biden only picked a female running mate because he knew he'd be less likely to get assassinated by the other guys because they don't necessarily want like a female president or something. Oh man. What if he was playing off of their bigotry? To, Ooh, wow. To protect, that, that's some 3d himself. chess right there. <laughs> oh man. That is that is a chess move. That it? is that's interesting. Yeah, I, they call I that wouldn't the, the queen and the bishop up at the top of the rook, or <laughs> <laughs> I I don't think it's quite that uh, well thought out, <laughs> um, but it could be, and that's the whole thing. Like you don't presume that you know the answer. You know, like how do you know the answer unless you live in someone else's mind? Oh. Okay, <laughs> my, my movie recommendation for this episode is Being John Malkovich. Hmm. Yes, everybody should watch Being John Malkovich. That's my recommendation. Weird, weird-ass movie, but it's good. Um, so I've never uh, seen it, but uh, okay. I've always wondered. I was like, so, is it really about what it says it is? Like, uh, 
kind of yeah what yeah kind of i remember um, trailers of like walking around inside of his ear or something like in his yeah, brain. yeah and and that like weird in between half floor and <laughs> go through that portal that you, you know brings everybody who goes through the the little hallway into john malkovich's mind and they can control him <laughs> um so so here's the thing here's the challenge you cannot comment on this video until you've watched Being John Malkovich. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you, you could totally comment if you, if you want to. But, but I highly <laughs> recommend watch that movie. Um, yeah. Maybe I'll have to watch that tonight. <laughs> it's Okay, be prepared to trip out. Um, it is <laughs> it's definitely not, not a normal movie. Uh, but it's good like and it makes you think that that that's really the whole thing like i like things that challenge what i believe i like to think about things like have things like make me like what the huh you know and think different things things i haven't thought before and ask questions and try to find answers and stuff and that's what conversations ought to do conversations with people on the street your friends your family and stuff I love disagreement. Like, I don't, I, okay, it's great to geek out with all of your uh, Red Dwarf friends or, or whatever, you know, D&D friends or comic book people. Everybody loves the same thing, right? That's kind of fun. But you're just stagnant. You're sitting, swirling around in the same place all day long. But when somebody new comes in, somebody that challenges what you believe, it makes you question everything. Like that's when you actually grow. And that's a good thing. Most people, nobody likes, right? Like, yeah, yeah. Oh, that person doesn't agree with me. I don't like that. So I don't like yeah. that person. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, no, those are the people you should be talking to. You should be talking to people that disagree. Here's the thing. If you're so firm in your own beliefs, you think you're totally right. Everything you believe is 100% correct. Well, it should withstand any level of scrutiny, any level of challenge from anybody else. If not, well, you should probably start asking questions about what you believe. Hmm. Deep shit. <laughs> oh, shit. Wow. <laughs> we went next level there. <laughs> oh, man. Hmm. How did we More get beer. where we are, man? <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty wild, though. Oh, geez. How, how all that stuff kind of connects. and Yeah. You know, like coming together, going apart, challenging each other or hurting each other, like all the paper thin sides of a fence that you can ride. Yeah. yeah. Huh. And, and, and some of the things like, you know, people we're, we're told to believe that, that challenges and, and pain are bad things. That's a bad thing, but I don't necessarily see it that way. Like some of the worst experiences I've had in my life were some of the most illustrative of things that I need to address in my life. Like it, it, it showed me my shortcomings yeah. um, and, and, you know, being exposed like, Oh shit. What? It's like those whole dreams where you, you, you show up to school naked or you, you're, you don't have any pants or something like that. <laughs> it's like, well, maybe that's a, that's a good learning experience. When you can show up to school, wearing no pants and just be like just own it like yeah yeah that's my dick yeah <laughs> <laughs> or whatever you know hey if you're a woman I, I i can't speak to that but you know yeah i just I, own it i do think people need to challenge themselves in that way more like you know stupid laws like nudity like people will argue to the death over why it's a bad thing for you to be naked in public who fuck who the fuck cares right like yeah take 
take your pants off, take your shirt off, whatever. It's hot outside. Feel comfortable, please. Well, and, and that, you know, that's, like, that's a really good point. Like people talk shit about nudist colonies and stuff and oh they're so weird and so backwards and it's like you know who's really backwards here is it the people who feel comfortable enough in their own body whoever they are that they can just like take their clothes off and be naked like completely natural around complete strangers yeah or is it the people that feel the need to cover themselves up and put makeup on and dress up and stuff. Right. Go, go. Who's the aberrant person in this regard? Yeah, I'll, I'll tell you who. I'll challenge anyone who fits in either of those categories to try to mentally notice each time in the day they're adjusting their person. Mm-hmm. Right? Like, how many times are you naked and you're like, a card maneuver, and, you know, like... <laughs> I knew that was coming. Like, we're we're <laughs> always like, oh, that's not comfortable. Like it's built into our body language. Like our our arms feel like they need to be doing something because they're so freaking used to adjusting your clothes to get comfortable. But that's a it, and, and there's another thing that like kind of like popped in my head here too. Clothes aren't natural. Like we're not born. Look, look. Watch any baby birth video. Do they come out wearing like a t-shirt and jeans? No, <laughs> they're completely fucking naked. And, and you can and, make and, the and it's all gross and weird. And and but people are like, oh, it's so beautiful. It's like, okay, well, okay. What happened between the time when somebody was born and the time when somebody is like an adult that being naked is somehow what changed like why is that all of a sudden like a bad thing when it was a perfectly fine thing before if it's not a picture of you being born or taking your first bath everything after or between that is porn yeah (laughs) oh oh, man and we did touch on this particular topic a little (laughs) bit but yeah i think it deserves repeating and and questioning over and over again the whole point is like i I don't know the right answer for things, but I ask questions about things and things make me ask questions and, and, and we should all be doing that. Like what? This, wait a minute. Right. What is pornography? No. Oh, like, so, oh yeah. Yeah. Oh, that. So <laughs> I, did, I just, shit. I just started drawing some lines, right? Like we think of pornography as just maybe nudity. Right. And, and you draw a line across to an anatomy and physiology book where there might be a drawing of a naked person is that pornography Mm. well you'd say no no that's that's very clinical it's just a picture okay now say that picture is somebody that drew a naked child Mm -hmm. is that child pornography or is it a drawing of a child well, Ooh. you'd say no. It's just a drawing of a naked child. It's it's clinic. It's very clinical. Okay, mm-hmm. so you you already drew a line from just naked to a drawing of just naked and changed something, right? So follow that down, and now you've got oh, it's just a drawing of a naked child. Now you take a picture of a naked child just standing there. They call that child pornography, but we just established that just a drawing which is just somebody just standing there, right? Neutral is a picture of a kid just standing there neutral naked. Is that child pornography or how do you know it wasn't taken for a textbook somewhere? Or like, yeah. And how do we draw those lines? That, that honestly, I think is probably a deeper philosophical question than we could possibly answer. Uh, We would take (laughs) us probably, at I mean, least four or five videos to to even begin to dive down into that one. But in, invariably, people are going to jump on this and think I'm advocating for child porn. And no, like if there's like some kind of weird penetration or anything like what? obviously lewd going on, yeah, okay. yeah that's a problem. But <laughs> uh, well, okay. Now I'm going to jump in here with my demonetized 
uh, thoughts that, <laughs> <laughs> that that if it's just a photo of a naked person, whatever their age, it doesn't matter. Like it, even right. if it's quote unquote porn, like, I don't know what you can, if, I, I would honestly like what you'd said, like what is pornography is a very valid question. I would ask for a factual scientific definition of that. Yeah. You know, um, it, okay. So where this is the problem where the blurred lines kind of get all mixed up together. Um, you know, just, just, there's like some naked kid, right. In a picture or a drawing. And all of a sudden that's child porn or something like that. Well, is it really like, it's just a picture of reality. You are photographing. What's the difference between taking a picture of a clock tower in your town center and taking a picture of your 12 year old kid in the bathtub? It's, something that is that's it yeah. like okay the 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 thing where i will agree with people who get all crazy about stuff is if there's compelled action like there's some kind of you know like there's no consent right like like, like nobody gave any consent and there's something bad heinous happening People are yeah. posting things online, like I, I, yeah, and con- okay. And consent in in this context has to be like something that's happening to you, like someone seeing you naked. Whether how how the, if that makes you feel uncomfortable for some reason, that's not like a, a physical impact on you. No, right? that's true. That's yeah. just your perspective, right? So, well, and, and especially in the world of the internet, like, do, okay, here's the thing, kids. Little kids, like 10-year-olds, 12-year-olds, 14-year-olds, whatever, you know, they post all kinds of videos to TikTok. They're all over the place on TikTok. They're, they're posting their intimate lives all day long. Videos of them, like, uh, you know, attempting to cook something making mistakes or whatever it's all out there for everybody to see yeah and and you know so i don't know that there's necessarily a difference if you have less clothing and and that that brings up another point how come i can like take my shirt off not that i'm necessarily going to um but how is it that i i can take my shirt off I, i can have my shirt off on youtube Nobody, nobody cares. Right. That, but I, if no, I was a girl with tits and I took my shirt off, all of a sudden, boom, demonetized, deleted. Yeah. Like, that's it. Oh, that is, whoa. It's yeah. porn all of a sudden. That is total bullshit. I'm all about that free the nipple movement. And it's not like, cause I want to like masturbate or something. It's because I actually think like, this is stupid. This is unfair. Mm-hmm. Um, when I'm really hot, I take my shirt off. Yeah. And girls can't do that. No, and that's bullshit. Get, that doesn't make any sense. Why can't you take your pants off for that matter? Right. Exactly. Like, it's too hot for pants. Cares? <laughs> who cares? It is your own body. It is look, th- this is the thing. Hey, for all you Christians out there, God made this body. You right. know, like this is what we have. Uh, this body. Um you know, is it bad? I don't get it. I don't understand. Yeah, oh. it's so done. It's so much boils down to religion. Like that's always the problem. Uh, yeah, and and it, it, and not just not just religion, but bullshit religion. Like if anybody really thought any about religious it, thinking, like, really, like yeah, going to oh, the core of this whole episode, exactly. You know? <laughs> yeah, anything that you just take on faith and do because of tradition mm-hmm. is is poisonous or because you're told to do so by some authority figure or something like that mm-hmm. like i would ask who the fuck are you you know like <laughs> who, who are you who the fuck <laughs> are you <laughs> <laughs> yeah like what i 
that thing is blown me away. Wow, we really like went down a really wormy rabbit hole here. Yeah. But I think I feel like we're going to tie this up at some point at the end. Uh, <laughs> I'm hoping. Yeah. Well, I mean, we, we went from unity to nudity. <laughs> <laughs> if, uh, if I remember that, I, I'm going to add that into the beginning. Cause that's, <laughs> that would actually be the, the, uh, the clip to precede the intro. Um, <laughs> That's perfect. Um, man. Oh, Jesus. I mean, I mean, nudity, like, I, I, I don't understand the problem with it on a legal sense whatsoever. Like, who, who has actually ever been physically harmed by the existence of nudity in a certain radius from them? You know, like. Well, and, and here's the thing. <laughs> Everybody takes a bath or a shower. You just have to look down at yourself mm-hmm. and and see your nude self, you know. And and, and 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 like you mentioned earlier, the whole sex thing. Like, so what if there's sex? That that's in fact the reason why there's so many humans on this planet. Right. That's exactly what humans do. It's really not that big of a deal. Like, and if you- I, I mean, the the people, the idea. That somehow, if you're having sex, there should even be a question of whether it's compelled or or something really says a lot about what somebody, uh, the way people perceive the universe. Yeah. Like, because, ooh, man. Oh, geez. <laughs> That's pretty heavy. Yeah. Uh, well, I... I tend to bring up those uh kinds of things and of course this is kind of at the last minute um <laughs> but but that's the thing it's like you know is sex inherently a bad thing and if so are wouldn't our children by extension be the product of something bad mm. oh yeah jeez yeah. <laughs> Yeah, like draw the draw the line between good and bad sex. Like, what is it? Mm-hmm. And that's that's all perspective too. Well, and and just like pornography, like what is it? Define it very clearly. You know. <laughs> so I'm, what is I, it? <laughs> I know that had to come to up. Throw out the whole like you know looking up into the stars and having a realization of the insignificance of the human race and Earth and stuff, but. It kind of all ties in. Hmm. Yeah. Wow. I had some really poignant thought, but I lost it. Oh, shit. And it was probably like the me- the answer to the meaning of life or something. Oh, damn it. Well, <laughs> we'll have to go until you have a moment to find that again because, yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Well, we've had a lot of beer. But somehow some really genius stuff comes out of these conversations. (laughs) Like I I don't think I would be contemplating some of these things if I had not had so much beer. Um, (laughs) It is the nectar of the gods. Mm. (laughs) And that does bring up the point is like our drugs. And, and you know, alcohol is a drug too. You know, yeah, people yeah. always say like drugs and alcohol. It's like no, but yeah. What is, is sub- what is sobriety? Yeah, yeah. Like what yeah. what end of that spectrum? Because you know, there's, there's some people who get so chiseled into reality. Oh, well, and 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 this is this is the problem: is these like hardline uh, walls between definitions that yeah. I think is the problem. Like. You know what? Yeah, what is sobriety like? If you go to Starbucks every morning and get like your, you know, triple shot mocha um, every day, well, you're a drug user. Um, I, I would say everybody's addicted to something. Yeah, by 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 the most micro clinical definition 
of what addiction is. Everybody said whether it be a substance or a behavior. Yes. Yeah, exactly. Um, and, and that, that is in our nature. So I think, I, I think at some that. level, everyone can understand addiction. Yeah. Like, you know, there are people who get all high and mighty and be like, you know, the identity fallacy. Well, you haven't lived through this. So you can't understand it. Well, it's like, maybe not your particular experience, but the actual experience of being addicted to something everyone can relate to. I think. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Oh man. Oh, that is a like, like I quit. I was smoking two packs a day. And then in 2004, one day I was like, I'm done. And just walked away from it. Some people cannot do that. No. But there are, uh, there are other things that I just cannot kick, you know? So it's, it's not like a disease that makes you this way or that it it's all dependent on the thing, you know? Well, and, and human beings are creatures of habit. We do things by habit. Um, and, and that translates to addiction, however you want to define it. Um, oh, do I have to throw in the uh, video that I did, the PSA parody uh, <laughs> about water? Yes. Um, <laughs> that was based on the, you know, the, your drugs on, uh, or your brain on drugs. <laughs> drugs on brain. <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh, man. Well, yeah, exactly. Like, mm. man. Wow, that it's there's like so this. many angles we've we've gone down. <laughs> oh my god! Wow, and to think all of well, thanks Joe Biden. Apparently, like his <laughs> rambling speech turned into a like really awesome episode. <laughs> thanks Obama turned into thanks Biden. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's really cool that Obama like. Got the joke. Yep. And did that. Oh, uh, he did yeah. the best commercials. Like, yeah. And, and didn't uh, uh <laughs> like Bob Dole the, even do yeah, something? Somebody baked him a giant cookie and he was trying to dunk it in milk and he couldn't. And he was like, Thanks, Obama. <laughs> <laughs> That's the whole thing. You got to be able to make fun of yourself. Um, oh, yeah. Like, the, the, the thing is, the universe, yes, the universe is full. Of a lot of bullshit. It is dark and it's hot. And it's full of radiation and shit that wants to kill you. And you're probably going to die. Um, but you might as well have a laugh on the way. Yeah. Uh, like, like from that moment on, I was like, okay, dude, like you get mad props for having a sense of humor. Like, yeah, never really see that with a president, someone that just takes it so easy or any politician for that matter Ab- yeah abdul went on saturday night live and made fun of himself yeah that was pretty cool time. too. that was good like yeah it got me you know whatever they're politicians they're just here's the okay the <laughs> takeaway from this politicians celebrities you know musicians or whatever they're just people like you and i doesn't matter what resources they have it doesn't matter whether they've written some great songs or made a cool video or I don't know, uh, run a country or something like that. Run a country. Um, it doesn't matter. They're all people. We're all people. And we're kind of in the same boat together in that we're revolving around a giant fusion reactor. Uh, on a rocky dirt ball um, we're a bunch of idiots and that fusion reactor is revolving around a black hole an insignificant black hole uh, no less that's the whole thing this galaxy doesn't mean shit you don't mean shit nothing means shit we're nothing um, we're going to blink out of existence at some point and, uh, that'll be it. So use your time wisely, I guess. 
That's my thought. Uh, that's some pretty good that? shit. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I, okay, turn a bit nihilistic, I guess. Um, <laughs> but yeah, but it, no, it all ties in. Like, where where do you draw the line at unity? Even like mm-hmm. you can you could split that into hairs. Well, that's a good point. Yeah. Oh man. Like what is unity? Like how much, how much of a consensus do you need to really call something a unity? What? And, and like you had said, is that even a good thing? Mm -hmm. Is it a good thing that we all think alike? Should we be North Korea or should we be South Korea? It's like, there's like divisibility. Like, if, if you have unity at a low level of divisibility, that's probably a bad thing. But at some point, you have enough variation off what you consider the norm to call it that line between mm-hmm. like a good thing and a bad thing. Oh, man, this is like <laughs> this is this is pretty amazing. Like you might have to be on some kind of psychedelic to understand this episode. <laughs> And I might actually be. Uh, (laughs) (laughs) Oh, man. (laughs) And then we go back and watch the episode and we're just like. (laughs) (laughs) Well, the important thing is. With really powerful substances, tread lightly, kids. (laughs) Um, (laughs) That's my piece of advice. Uh, (laughs) Man, this is th- oh never done anything too wild, but I've always been curious. If you would like to see us perform an episode on some illicit substance, uh, <laughs> go oh, to yeah, our if Patreon. You see us, uh, <laughs> drop acid. Uh, yeah, we'll do it. Um, you but you gotta be a you gotta be a hundred dollar a month Patreon subscriber because you know <laughs> legal fees. Ugh. Yeah, <laughs> we'll have to fight our that. way out of court on that one. Uh, <laughs> I don't know how YouTube would see that. Actually, <laughs> I think it's going to be have to be a little more than a hundred dollar patron. Uh, but if there's enough Patreon <laughs> or patrons, um, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh man. Well, we've unlocked a lot of philosophical doors tonight yeah, uh, the, the space this, time continuum can't really handle I, much more this uh, whole episode has been its own acid trip like <laughs> you don't even have to like use lsd like th- this is gonna like change your mind i, I would oh hope. man imagine if somebody watched our episodes on lsd Oh man, we need to see that. We need to, yeah. Like that that should be an episode. (laughs) Oh, we gotta have a guest. Get get a guest to watch each episode on acid (laughs) and do another episode off of that. Oh god, we totally. They're gonna be like, I can fly and jump out the window. (laughs) God. Oh man, no, no, don't do that. We're going to hell. You cannot fly. (laughs) Nope. Well, not without like a wingsuit or some technological something or other. That's gliding. Yeah. Flying is upward lift. That's true. Yeah. You're not a bird, no matter how <laughs> many birds. Rhythmic and predictable and repeatable mm-hmm. upward lift. <laughs> oh, man. Well, this has been like a very crazy convoluted and a very enjoyable episode actually of, oh my god oh yeah yeah I, this, is, I, this I, is therapy like everyone should watch this weekly because it's it's something i look forward to doing and, yeah, you're and hopefully right. you're getting the same benefit it is kind of like therapy like oh man yeah, yeah. imagine yeah, if, if, if Hey, if anyone out there, if anyone out there needs to talk something out, come on the show. Yeah, I agree. We talk about everything. It's kitchen sink micro. You know? Yeah, no <laughs> old bard. I mean, you know, uh, you know, yeah, okay. You got to deal with the YouTube algorithm and like their 
code of conduct and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, within that confine, we'll uh, we'll talk about anything. Yeah. I mean, I mean, the, the very fact that we said the words child pornography will probably get this flat. Uh, but if, but if anyone said actually it multiple sits, times too, yeah. And but if anyone actually sits and watches, they're going to see that it's a discussion about not the actual thing, you know? Yeah. Like, and, and you have to pay attention to that kind of detail. Exactly. And that's the, like the whole point of this unity conversation. Yeah. Oh man. Like, ooh. Like it it's it's the thread. You need to see the tree through the forest in that case, you know? Yeah. Which is very hard for most people yeah. to do. Oh man. Oh man. Jeez. Yeah. Unity, like how do we tie this all back neatly? Uh, to the end, I don't know that we can. I mean, we've gone so far down the rabbit hole, the we might as well have fuzzy tails <laughs> on our asses now. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and if that and if that tree falls, but there's no one to hear it, does it make a sound? <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were gonna say, if you like, you like, there guys are no with sounds tails. to hear. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. <laughs> Oh Jesus! Wow, that I, uh, man. How, how do we bring it all full circle back to the beginning? I think I think we just did. I think we what? threaded the needle, man. Ooh, <laughs> you gotta like unload, man. Cobra, man. Like, <laughs> well, why are we fighting so much? <laughs> oh man. Okay, people, so people would think that's an inside joke that we came up with under marijuana, but it wasn't. It was like <laughs> stone sober. Exactly. Well, so if, if you want to watch us uh, smoke pot and uh, <laughs> record an episode, uh, donate to Patreon. Patreon.com slash KSM Bigcast. Uh, yeah, we only need us... 20 bucks to go down to the dispensaries. Well, yeah, oh, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> we're in Washington State. We're we're probably mostly free and clear, so we don't have to deal with the feds. Uh, <laughs> just the taxes. Uh so yeah. Donate to that. <laughs> we'll uh we'll do a video. Um, but yeah, I guess I don't know. Like my thought at the end is be civil to one another. You know, discuss your differences rather than fight. Have a beer or a, smoke a joint, like whatever, <laughs> whatever your poison, like whatever makes you happy. But above all, talk it out. Have a sit down. Mainline like, some crack. It's, yeah, yeah you know. <laughs> well, yeah. Okay. Well, that's. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, <laughs> we'll end on crack, I guess. <laughs> oh man! Demonetize. <laughs> <laughs> well, I I would hope everybody found this conversation as enlightening and enjoyable as as we did. I, I it it was definitely fun. Yeah. Like, hope everyone had as much beer as we did. Yes. Uh, so I've got four or, beers. Oh, wait. No, sorry. I've got cider. a full beer. Holy shit. I've got a full beer. I have three <laughs> beers here, empty, and I have a full one there. So, all right. To got the it. future. I got about two and a half pints down. <laughs> in, in, in this stretch of the day. <laughs> uh, night. <laughs> night. Yes. <laughs> well, it's day, day somewhere. Is this- <laughs> it's day somewhere you know I like Did half you my cross be three the decline into alcoholism <laughs> <laughs> but apparently somehow it gets better <laughs> <laughs> oh man pretty much well, hopefully uh hopefully everybody's found this as enjoyable and as enlightening as i have this uh, is why you need to be a beer vendor on Kitchen sink microscopy. Yes. Uh, Advertise your beer here. See how crazy philosophical we get when we're drunk on your beer. 
<laughs> exactly. So <laughs> Elysian space dust. Like I, I, I probably, I probably see, give see, them. They're going to sponsor me and not you. Cause I'm always drinking something different. <laughs> you always drink space dust. <laughs> but then wouldn't they sponsor me? Hmm. No, see, see, we're going to get a, a bigger variety. Of customers, well, I, I, the, the variety is totally fine. But you know, <laughs> maybe our biggest sponsor is going to be uh, the biggest merchant. Oh, um, okay. If you want to be our biggest sponsor, <laughs> fight tooth and nail against other companies and invest in kitchen sink microscopy. <laughs> Welcome to the Thunderdome. <laughs> Two men enter, one man leaves. <laughs> Oh man! Best marketing ever. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> oh man! Well, that 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 was good. Well, we're um, we've I think we've gone on long enough for now. Um, you know, if you have other ideas or or comments, like definitely throw them down there. We we look at all these comments. We'll probably respond to them if we're not too drunk. Um, and. It's- it's awesome that you deep sync dove with us, but we don't necessarily need that unity. So it's okay if you don't deep sync doved with us. Yeah, like I dove dived dived <laughs> dead. Yeah, I don't want a bunch of friends who live in the echo chamber. Like I want people who challenge me. That's the whole thing. It's like if you feel you don't know enough you should make friends with the smartest people you can find people that challenge you that, that like are so above your station that you feel you can't possibly keep up. Th- that'll raise the bar so high. Um, that'll force you into, you know, learning some things and getting better because we should all be getting better. Um, yeah. And, and, and the same goes for, ideologies like you know you disagree with people and so you know don't make friends with people you agree with make friends with people you disagree with and and go to coffee or a bar or well, whatever like mix them up mix them up a little yeah uh, well yeah, yeah yeah exactly don't yeah, yeah. i'm the, not this... saying you should be exclusively making friends with people you yeah totally disagree with but you should have some people in the mix yeah, because because there's there's good to be had from both, right? Like, yeah, you, you do like there is a need, a human need for social support, right? Like, I know I'm doing right because my best friends think I'm doing right, you know that sort of thing. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like, so in that know, sense, echo chambers can be. Oh, we should we could do a whole episode on echo chamber. Oh, we totally should. <laughs> well, but but that that's the whole thing. It's like you know, if you're a Star Wars person. Maybe you should make a few friends that are Star Trek people, some Trekkies. You know, if you're a Trekkie, like make some friends with some Star Wars people. Um, you might learn something. You, you might come to appreciate the things that those other people appreciate. Because the, here's the thing they don't appreciate these things because they're dumb. There's probably something behind that, um, you know, a, a rationale. And, yeah, nerds and, are not dumb. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Oh man, and and the, you know, I use uh, fictional science fiction and space western uh, movie and videos uh, to illustrate Ooh. that. But the same goes to everything else. What? Oh man, what is a majority? Oh. How much of a chunk of the pie does it need to be? Because we've we've arbitrarily de- defined half and half, and two thirds and a third, right? Yeah. Why? Oh shit! What? Good thing I have like a nearly full beer. Like, wow, <laughs> we're about to go into an hour and a half now. Oh man! But like, while we're while we're splitting shit in half, like, what is a what is a majority? Is it a mathematical thing or is it more phil- philosophical? Well, I would say it's, I mean, it could be both. 
Um, but is it significant? Because is something significant because it crosses over like a 50% threshold? I'd say no. Like consensus doesn't really mean shit. Yeah, um, this is interesting because you've got more of the the philosophical perspective that the majority doesn't necessarily know it's best. Yeah. And, and I, I tend to come from the other angle. So it would be interesting to see where we meet in the definition of majority, because that's the, that's kind of the, the fence, right? Well, and, and I mean, you know, the definition versus the rationale, like why, um, yeah. Okay, that is definitely a topic for for a, a whole episode. It like, is. Yeah, we should break <laughs> that down and make that be its own episode because that that could go. Well, I mean, we we're an hour and I don't know, like twenty four <laughs> minutes or something already. Um, it'd be really cool if it hit an hour and twenty four as soon as I said that, but it probably won't. Um, but. Man, ooh. I would, I, just, whoever you are, comment, leave a comment, like tell us what you think about what we've been talking about. Um, get the conversation going, keep it going. Yeah, definitely. Oh, man. Especially if you disagree with somebody, like, in fact, even more so, if you disagree with somebody, there's something there, there's a reason to have a conversation. Yeah. I mean, you could, wow. you and I, like Casey, we, we can like go on and on, like quoting Red Dwarf and geeking out <laughs> over it and stuff. Like, we, we, yeah, we pretty much agree on that. Um, but, but the things we disagree on, I think, are a lot more meaningful. Yeah. Um, and like, how far you, can you divide like sides of an issue? Like anything. I, I would say infinitely. Yeah. Um, that that is actually a really good point you, because the thing is like in in the world at large there's this idea that that there's only two factions there's this side and that side and, and only one can be right and and <laughs> it's like well but what if they're both wrong or what if they're both right in a certain sense yeah. how would you know how, how would you know and... if the entire conflict devolved into this team versus that team and that's it like you never discuss the facts at hand you never discuss the differences the details or anything you just simply argue about like well i'm right and you're right and uh, that kind of thing like uh, yeah i don't think like, it does anybody any good yeah what if what if your only difference boiled down to whether you think a green duck looks better than a brown duck, you know, yeah. and and that's that's the division, right? Like, how or, or like, do you see that? Or, like, or like, you know, pineapple on pizza, or something like that. And there's mm-hmm. people that like really get freaking oh, yeah. crazy over that shit. Yeah, I think there have been at least thirteen thousand five hundred murders based on pineapple versus pizza arguments. Yeah. I mean, got, give I've, or take thirteen thousand five hundred, but um, <laughs> <laughs> such is how st- statistics work. Uh, yeah. Oh, <laughs> mm. oh man! And, well, if you're a pineapple on pizza person, fuck you. Um, what? Actually, what? Nah, I don't. I don't really mind it. <laughs> I, I, I'm okay with it. Just, just no Canadian bacon. What? It just ham. Well, it's just exactly. called Canadian bacon, but it's ham. It's no fuck different than ham. <laughs> That's the whole thing. <laughs> oh man, it, it's in the name, you know. <laughs> that, uh, and that's what divides people. Just bullshit, like made up fabrications. Like, it's Canada's it fault. Matters. <laughs> yeah, like it's, and you could say ham. Sure. Oh, sorry about that. Yeah. <laughs> You could say ham all day long, but at the end of the day, it's pig. Mm -hmm. It's meat from pigs. Um, At the end of the day, it's porcine. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. You you could draw lines all the way back to somewhere you want to find it by. What you'd said, like, how far do you divide things? 
Um, and I, I, and I think people don't divide them far enough mm. and don't contemplate why they divide things. That's a whole important question is like, ask yourself, why do you see a division? Where does that come from? And you got to ask yourself how far it's too far. Like yeah. you can cut something so thin that it loses structural integrity and you just can't get like a clear sheet of it. Right. Yeah. And that might be the point where you draw your line between like what's right for you and what might be right in an empirical sense. Well, yeah. And, and, and like, as you subdivide things, at what point do they become indistinguishable from everything else? Uh, like at, at what point when you are like cutting the pizza into little chunks, does it become just a bunch of mush? like a bunch of bread and some meat particles and some cheese. Like, and then is the pineapple pizza any different than the uh, Canadian bacon pizza? Oh man. A particle of the whole is greater than the sum of its parts because it dared to break off and explore the new. Oh man. (laughs) Oh shit. Like we, Okay, so I apologize in advance. There's probably going to be like a two-minute intro on this video because we have so many good clips. <laughs> um, and if, if your favorite clip did not get included in the intro, <laughs> I apologize too. Um, you know, there's only so much you could do. Uh, this is this- probably a Guinness world book of records length of closing the show (laughs) yeah well not only that but like how many different topics we can include in an hour and a half from something joe biden said yeah yeah like (laughs) a few words in an inauguration speech yielded like an hour and a half conversation about the meaning of life like it's an existential thing like Oh man, that is, that is perfect kitchen sink microscopy right there. Yeah, totally. <laughs> oh man, some shit that Joe Joe Biden dribbled turned into like <laughs> the meaning of life. <laughs> oh man, <laughs> this has actually been like, I would say this is probably up there with my favorite episodes. Oh yeah. Um, man, it's not just the beer talking, but it is talking. Uh, it is. It is. <laughs> that, laddie, it is at that. I. <laughs> Arr, do we have to go into pirate speak now? <laughs> Someone with any Scottish Empire. Arr. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, I totally have to take a piss now. Oh, man. <laughs> Wait. Hang on a second. Pirates. Don't they piss on their clothing to whiten them? I mean, probably. What? <laughs> I, I thought like Mythbusters did an episode about how using the ammonia and urine to bleed. Yeah, yeah. Like you, you <laughs> like clean clothing doing that. I, I'm like, ah, I don't think that was a real thing. I mean, theoretically, it could work. It could, but how much ammonia is in urine? Okay, wait, wait, hold on a second. We're going, <laughs> going way too far. Um, <laughs> Oh yeah, I forgot that we talked about nudity for GTS. For Google yeah. that shit. <laughs> yeah. Well, in you know, test How it. Much of urine is ammonia. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're totally <laughs> ninety. Okay, so 91 to 96% of urine is water. So already it's like not much. Yeah, very little. I guess 460 parts. I'm guessing that's the the uh, you know, unit here. Uh, total nitrogen milligrams per liter is 8830 versus milligrams per mole per liter i think uh that's a weird comparison yeah uh, either way it doesn't sound like much no no (laughs) i'm gonna say it's probably not 
Um, so don't piss on your clothes. Um, <laughs> and don't piss on me and say it's raining. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> it's, oh, it's gross. Man. There's like 460 milligrams per mole per liter of ammonia in there, dude. <laughs> <laughs> we have to do uh do we have to like diverge into squirting? Uh okay, let's not <laughs> no no we go from unity we're, to we're all, squirting real. <laughs> can we be double demonetized? And yes, squirting is real. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, okay. So I think that's probably a good point to end on. Um, demonetize. <laughs> yes, we're demonetized. Like many times over, um, but that's fine. Like, in fact, I feel like it's a badge of honor. Like, if YouTube doesn't like what we're talking about, it's probably something worth talking about. Yeah, that's some outlaw shit right there. Yeah, oh, <laughs> man. Like every second of this video <laughs> is something that should be in the intro. <laughs> oh man. Okay. Well, again. We'll if just I, have an episode length intro bit. <laughs> yeah. We should probably do like a, a year end, like all of the greatest quotes and statements that we've made. Oh man, that was such year. hardcore editing. I tried to do oh. something like that in the first season. Oh, oh yeah. It, it, I mean, because our videos are that. so long, like we can't do that. Yeah. I mean, we, it's just us. <laughs> we don't have an editing team or anything like that. It's <laughs> just us two dudes figuring things out. On our own resourcefulness. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so, you know, if you have any, you know, misgivings or complaints about the way we do things, like, yeah, blaming, blame the editing team. Yeah. Um, don't be they, a dick. Yeah. They <laughs> fucking suck. Um, yeah. <laughs> we're probably about to fire them uh, yeah. but lazy bastards <laughs> <laughs> oh man well I, I I holy shit this is a show me the way to go <laughs> home I'm, I'm tired, tired and I want to go, go to bed, bed. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure that was very uh, dissonant <laughs> but that's okay it was a little bit drunk so that that's fine keeping in uh, line with this channel's theme uh, so yeah if you're a little bit drunk um, and you're enjoying what we're talking about you know leave some comments down there I'm French <laughs> leave some comments in the comments section you know ask a few questions Talk to people, you know, talk to people you don't know. Maybe people you disagree with. Ooh, scary. Um, <laughs> you might just learn something. <laughs> yeah, you might learn something or make a friend. Who knows? Um, yeah. Yes. Hmm. Subscribe to the channel. Yeah, subscribe. Um, Check out the music. Oh, yeah, there's going to be some music on the way out, I think. So um, we write that shit. Yeah, something new every time. Um, yeah, man. Whoa. And thanks for super duper deep sink diving with us <laughs> down the like the deepest rabbit hole we've ever gone down. I think yeah. to date, I would say. Damn. Um, wow that that went like from like zero to negative eleven. Um, <laughs> that was. That was some deep shit. Um, <laughs> wow. Oh, man. Probably probably one of our better episodes. Yeah. Um, and if you agree, give us a thumbs up. If you disagree, give us a, give a thumbs down. Or, you know, you can just fuck off. Um, yeah. yeah. <laughs> or watching leave a comment. Dick. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to need you. <laughs> exactly. Oh, Come on, bugger off. We don't need that. <laughs>